Welcome to Run With It, BC's only running fitness and health show. On this month's episode, we have a race report on the Vancouver Spirit Run. Plus, we have Powered by Chocolate Milk Nutrition Ambassador Crystal Higgins, who shares some tips on how to properly fuel your body. And coming up later in the show, you have a chance to win a contest for an entry into this year's Woman to Warrior event, so stay tuned for that. But first, let's go to Doctor's Corner. Check this out. Joining me on Doctor's Corner is optometrist Dr. Pavan Avanashi, and he's here to talk about presbyopia awareness and the latest in eye care technology. Welcome to the show, Dr. Avanashi. Thank you so much. Happy to be talking to you. I'm excited, and it's World Sight Day coming up on October 12th. That's right. And the theme is make, vision, make your vision count. That's right. You know, World Sight Day is a global initiative that happens annually, and it's to bring focus and awareness to visual impairment and blindness. It's a great initiative that is, uh, uh, that is supported by numerous global organizations, including the World Health Organization and Optometry Giving Site. That's wonderful. Now, which leads me to presbyopia awareness. What is that? What is that condition? What is presbyopia? Good question. Literally translated from Latin, it means the aging eye. So it's a natural physiological process that affects every human being. And it's when we lose the ability to focus in that near. It's the loss of elasticity of our accommodative system. So when the maturing population base in the world, close to two billion people will be affected by presbyopia or are currently being affected by presbyopia. And over 40, is that? That's right, that's typically the magic age that we say, that it starts to develop or symptomatically happen close to the age of 40 years old. Some people it's right on their 40th birthday, some people it's not till their mid to late 40s, but inevitably it happens to absolutely everybody. Dr. Anamashi, when when do we really know that we do have, we should see an eye doctor, right? Yeah. I, I always consult. If you feel like there's been some change and uh, you are starting to notice that ability to, or that inability to start to focus at new things at near, A, don't freak out. Just realize that this is a natural process. B, don't ignore it at the same time. Uh, once you feel like it's something that's pretty common or becoming a regular part or debilitating part of your daily routine, I would consult with an eye doctor. Come see your optometrist, and they'll be happy to discuss the various options that you can do to address this weakening ability to focus in that ear or this presbyopia. Yes, and also if you're on a run or a hike and you can't see your fitness tracker or your watch, yeah. you might have that condition. <laughs> That's true, and let's, let's look at the options. I mean, up till now, for years and years, we would either give reading glasses or we would have to put a patient into progressive glasses or bifocals to amend or ad address this fact that you're having challenges reading at near. Nowadays, technology has changed, and, and we can introduce this technology into contact lenses, which gives active people an option to address this as well. And is the dailies total one multifocals? Absolutely. Well, I mean, we've been great. This has been great that we have this new technology. It's a very innovative process where it's a contact lens that allows you to seamlessly see not only at distance, but also at near as well. And it's great because it's a daily modality contact lens. So it has optimal comfort, optimal convenience, and then it gives you that, like I said, that ability to focus in at distance, but also have that ability to compensate for near as well. It helps with your healthy lifestyle and also too is that it can help with stigmatism or depending on your condition, yeah, right? Yeah, depending on your condition you can do stigmatism, but with the multifocal contact lens, of course, it, we're focusing on just giving you comfortable and great distance vision with the ability to see and focus in that near. So for a runner, for example, you, nowadays with so much technology that you have that you're tracking your, your pace, your distance that you're running, your heart rate, sometimes my patients are stopping are not using those technologies, are not adopting those technologies because they're having a challenge. They're, in mid-run, they can't see their watch. They can't look at their smart device to see what's going on. With the Daily's Total One multifocal contact lens and technology like that, it, you can do this seamlessly without having to pause or flinch at all. Yes, yeah, so you have like a monthly, daily as well. Like yeah. So there's daily contact lenses, there's monthly contact lenses as well. In the, in the monthly modalities, there's some great multifocal lenses as well. But for an active lifestyle, I'm a huge proponent of dailies. A, because of the comfort, the convenience, and just the overall health benefits, especially with the, the uh, Dailies Total One contact lens. It's a water gradient contact lens. It's a first in the market that has that technology, which allows a, a person that may have a problem to dryness or exposed to the winds and the elements, it helps counter that a lot easier and a lot better as well. Yes, and just to say, so if you're noticing a uh, change in your eye vision, you need to 
see up close or there's your squinting or eye strain, yes. see an optometrist. Yes, of course. I think that would be the initial start as opposed to self-diagnosing or ignoring the fact that what's happening. A lot of people are well aware that when this starts to happen, it's, it's a maturing, it's a reality of life that we're getting old. But at the end of the day, if it's affecting your life, we have a lot of great tools and options to help offset this. Make sure you see your eye doctor of to course. see if you have that condition, yeah. presbophobia, yeah. and to get an eye exam every year, right? Absolutely. We, we advocate check yearly, see clearly. I, you know, on average, every person should be seeing their eyes checked at least once a year. And I want to thank you very much for coming on the show. And for more information, you can go to loseyourreaders.ca. Joining me is runner and registered dietitian Crystal Higgins. She's also the Powered by Chocolate Milk Dietitian Ambassador. And she's here to talk about how to properly fuel your body. Welcome to Run With It. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me again. Yeah, I'm so happy you're here. Yes. And um, I love chocolate milk. <laughs> so yes. tell us how chocolate milk can help runners um, or people who lead a healthy lifestyle. Yes, well chocolate milk is really the perfect recovery beverage because it has the right package of nutrients. Not only that, it's easily accessible, it's very convenient, and it's in a liquid form, which is you know really easy for athletes to digest after a workout. And really what we're looking for is a combination of protein, um, sorry, protein, carbohydrates, <laughs> electrolytes, and hydration. And it really has all of those things in one little package. It's hard to believe so many benefits, but also taste good. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and that's one more reason to, to drink it. And I think the, the other thing to consider is that it is a bit of a treat. So, you know, make sure that it is a significant um, intense workout that you're you're using it for and not just you know a casual walk around the block that your body does really need to repair refuel and rehydrate after you've worked really hard and ideally you want to have at least double the amount of carbohydrate compared to protein and chocolate milk has just that so um, I, it's always something I recommend for athletes yes and also too, if people want more information what can they do? Yes, for more information on the web, www.poweredbychocolatemilk.com. Also, Twitter and Instagram at PB Chocolate Milk and on Facebook at Powered by Chocolate Milk. Great, and thank you so much for coming on the show. And when you come back, we'll talk about maybe chocolate milk and running to part two. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks so much, Christine. Thank, thank you. you. We'll be right back after this break. Joining me is Jessica Smith, and she's going to talk to us today about the Vancouver Spirit Run. Welcome to the show, Jessica. Oh, thank you. Great to be here. So what is your role here? Um, well, I am one of the volunteers um, and on the board of directors for the Vancouver Spirit Run. Um, it was formerly known as the Whistler Spirit Run, um, where it was first held, but we moved it down to Vancouver here. And um, we're excited to be here at Jericho Beach and um, we've been here for a number of years now and uh, great participation. We see numbers growing every year, so yeah, it's great. So describe the event today. I see a lot of runners, uh, spectators. Yes, yeah, um, the numbers are growing. We um, have had an influx this year, so that's great to see um, participants from all age groups and um, from a variety of local communities in the Lower Mainland come out, um, whether it's clubs or schools, um, high school, elementary school, um, masters athletes. It's just awesome to see everyone come together and um, run the race in uh, remembrance of Frank Reynolds, uh, who had a vision to create um, just a great festival of cross country and um, provide the opportunity for everyone to uh, just participate. That's wonderful. And then it's an 8K, correct? Uh, there's an 8K for our Open Masters um, senior runners and a 6K for those um, female runners. And then we have a number of age groups um, ranging from under 9 years old all the way up to the high school 14 to 16 um, year old athletes who uh, will get a chance to run a variety of different um, distances. And uh, this year, we, our new edition of uh, Hay Bales has provided um, yet another, uh, just, you know, a complex uh, of different things out on the course today. Yes, and you know, it's like, it's someone who's never 
you know, run uh, cross country or trail run, what would you say to them? Uh, I would say it's it's definitely an opportunity to uh, see what your potential is off the road or off the track. You know, um, most runners, you know, we dictate our successes sometimes by time and um, because of the, the variety of courses that uh, cross country provides and the elements such as the hay bales or any mud or um, the rain because our, our competitions are held in the fall. Um, you know, it, it does give everyone a chance to mostly just focus on um, their participation and running for themselves and getting to the finish line um, using their, their own ability and their energy rather than focusing on beating a certain time. Happy fall, happy cross country running. Exactly, yeah. No, it's a great season. You know, we have awesome weather um, this September. So we, um, we're we very grateful for, you know, the support we have from uh, many of our sponsors that are out here today. And of course, um, all the spectators and fans who have followed uh, the Vancouver Spirit Run for many years and helped um, create this vision that Frank Reynolds uh, left us with um, as a former uh, athlete of his. You know, he really instilled a lot of um, great characteristics within his athletes and um, really focused on creating um, athletes, but better people as well. So um, I think there's a number of us of his former athletes here today and we sit on the board and help run this race. And it's just a great testament to um, how he coached and uh, what he brought forward to, to leave for the, the future. Thank you so much, Jessica, for coming on the show. No problem. Thanks for being here. Now it's time for our contest for your chance to win an entry into this year's Women to Warrior event. The question is, when is the event and where will it be held? To answer, simply go to our website and we'll do a random draw. And good luck. Joining me is Ashley Wiles, who is a founder and head coach of Soul Girls. Ashley is also a youth speaker, life coach, and mental health advocate. She started running at five years old and now runs and competes in triathlons around the world. Ashley is here today to talk about her Soul Girls program and her passion to inspire others through running. Welcome to the show, Ashley. Hey, thanks so much for having me. So exciting. So you started running at five. What? inspired you like that age yeah I have an amazing family who just loved to run I think my grandfather ran his first marathon when he was 75 and yeah and and he was a kind of like the, one of those kick butt people that just like wore hiking boots and ran up the grind like before the grind was a thing and he kind of inspired my whole family so I would see my mom getting up every morning going for a run and just that consistency of you know let's all do the sun run together or let's all do this event together and it was just fun to grow up there so introducing running as a, you know, a family thing, but a good thing for sport, right? To keep healthy and so for you've competed triathlons all around the world. Um, what triathlons have you competed in? You've actually competed in Ironman too, right? Yeah, I've done a couple of Ironmans. Um, <laughs> and yeah, just recently I did a, a thing called Orava Man in Slovakia. That was really cool. It's a half iron distance um, that felt more like a full iron distance. Um, and I've been to 70.3 Worlds, which is the half iron distance in, in Europe. And that was fun too. So yeah. That's amazing. And Ashley, do you have a favorite distance? <laughs> Um, I don't know if I have a favorite distance. I just like, I love running. I love being on my feet and I love being outdoors. Um, last year I had huge Achilles issues. So this year I'm just happy to be not injured and outdoors and having so much fun. That's wonderful. And yeah. tell me about Soul Girls. So Soul Girls, um, gosh, so many things to say about Soul Girls. Essentially, it's just a nine week program uh, that trains girls to enjoy physical activity, to get active and have fun doing it. And we connect girls with mentors who are high school, university students, or just awesome people in the community who love to run and really want to create that community of, um, of fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and from there, we've started doing camps. So we have two day and five day spring and summer camps. And uh, we're doing a, a Valentine's Day mother daughter party too. So it's really just about connection and fun physical activity. And it's for girls, right? It's for girls ages 8 to 12. 8 to 12. So it is, uh, the program is about building confidence, 
and yeah. introducing sport, physical literacy, right? Yeah, so girls, um, generally when we're at the age of like 10 to 12, we really make a decision on whether or not, or how we describe ourselves and whether or not we enjoy physical activity. Mm -hmm. So it's a really key age to say, yes, I'm active, or describing myself and who I am, kind of like, yes, I'm an athlete, or no, I'm not a runner, I'm, not a, I'm a gymnast, or I'm a dancer, or whatever it is that's your thing. You really decide that between the ages of 10 to 12. And if you're not enjoying physical activity, like really fun physical activity, then you probably won't be active till the, when you're about 25. Um, in that case, when you're about 20 to 25, you start to look at beauty magazines. You're like, oh, I need to lose weight, or I need, you know, the conversation changes, and it's not about fun anymore. Um, and our mental health really suffers. So this is a really big deal, and it's a really big conversation to to start having. Yes, and that is something like this is the first program, right? For that's what was missing for girls, right? And that's what you are trying to do and also you're a speaker right yeah and how do you like how successful is the program uh, well we've had over the we started in 2013 so right. we're gonna have our fourth birthday in April and oh. we've had over a thousand girls through the program which is wow. pretty amazing we have about 14 locations that we run in the lower mainland um, and this is different locations we have amazing coaches in different areas and we've just expanded to Australia um, this past wow. winter. Wow, that's wonderful. And how, how does one become a leader? Yeah, so we have lead hership training coming up. Um, we're doing one in Kelowna, in uh, Calgary, in Vancouver, Montreal, um, and Australia, all coming up this year. So we've got some really big goals and just really training um, coaches, parents, like inspiring mentors who want to see the impact on girls um, change, who either love physical activity, have been through something, whether it's uh, mental health or body image or bullying, um, bullying for sure. Anti-bullying days coming up, pink shirt days coming up. Um, this is a really big issue. So building girls' confidence, because we all have a story. Yes. We all have something that we've been through and you know, to feel like we can change that for other people is so huge. Yes, and you have summits as well. And, um, but you know, I was uh, reading something like uh, Amanda Todd. Was that something that drove you to create Soul Girls? Yeah, so uh, 2013, uh, 2012 was a really big year for me. I was dealing with a lot of uh, my own mental health issues, huge anxiety, um, bouts of depression, and really just not understanding who I was. I think I really lost the balance of my mind. And um, Amanda Todd's video that she posted that went viral, it, it really hit a chord for me because I realized um, that I wasn't alone. And, and that's a scary place to be when you're in that really dark space and you think that, you know, you self-isolate. And, uh, and that, I think she actually saved my life because it was, you know, like, get back into your body. You have to change this. And you can either go down this road or you can do something about it. And um, I'm really lucky to have such an amazing supportive community, especially the running community, that really brought me back to life. And, um, yeah, it's just so special for me. So Amanda Todd is an amazing human um, who lives on in, in my heart and throughout Soul Girls. Well, you're an amazing person. Oh, thank you. <laughs> inspiring others. And if people want more information, where can they go, Ashley? Yeah, soulgirls.org is our website. And all of our leadership programs and programs and licensing programs are all on our website. That's wonderful. And our social media. They can follow us on oh, yes. <laughs> Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Um, it's soul underscore girls. Wonderful. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Joining me is registered dietitian Gloria Sang, who's also the founder of HealthCastle.com. And welcome back. Thank you, Christine, for having me back. So we're going to talk about four immune-boosting foods. Absolutely. October time, everyone is now getting back indoor. What can we eat to actually boost our immune? So it will be a perfect time to talk about this topic. We have kiwi. <laughs> now, so I was planning to talk about vitamin C. You may wonder why I bring along some kiwi. Indeed, one of this adorable kiwi have as much vitamin C as an orange. Now, have you tried, Christine, have you tried the yellow type of kiwi called sun gold? 
No, but I'm really, I would love to try. Now, so the sun gold yellow kiwi is actually a different variety of kiwi. It's a lot sweeter than the sour green kiwi. Uh, but if you think about sugar content and glycemic index, they're pretty much the same. So they're both considered the green and the yellow, the sun gold, considered the same low glycemic index food, which is about 38 and 39 glycemic index value. So they're the same in terms of nutritional values. So vitamin C, lots of vitamin C there. Lots of vitamin C. So in the fall, I would bring along one to two kiwi to work. And so just one in the morning and one in the afternoon as afternoon snacks. So just to be boost up my immune. Yeah, you need that for colds. And, and if you're working out, you know, it's you got to be really armored with lots of immune boosting foods. Absolutely. The studies found out that vitamin C can actually reduce cold symptoms as well as shorten the duration of sick time. So that's the reason why everyone's talk about vitamin C during the cold and flu season. That's wonderful. And we have nuts. Now, nuts, we often think about the plant-based omega-3, the fiber, but indeed assorted nuts have also selenium and vitamin E, and these two nutrients are also able to boost white blood cell count and also give our immune a little boost. So some nuts as snacks, you know, in the office in the afternoon would be a great option as well. And you can have like pre-workout and post-workout. Now, so pre-workout, I would go for the higher carbohydrate content of sugar. So I would go for kiwi and post-workout, I would have some nuts as protein just to rebuild muscles. Good information. And then we have garlic. Absolutely. Now, garlic is not just a condiment or a herb. We can actually use garlic as immune boosting. Now, garlic, similar to kiwi, is able to also boost the white blood cell count and also shorten the duration of cold time. So we could probably cook some garlic. If we worry about afternoon, we could probably have garlic as dinner time about the breath. Because <laughs> <laughs> I worry about your breath. I mean, it tastes good. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, speaking of boosting um, immunity cell activity, one specific nutrient found in mushrooms called beta-glucan can also do that. Now, oftentimes we talk about boosting immunity, mushroom, we often think about the exotic mushroom. You know, those really hard to pronounce mushroom like maitake, reishi, shiitake. I brought along some really common mushrooms that we can find in supermarket, cremini and white button. All mushrooms contain beta-glucan, so it doesn't have to go for the exotic varieties. We can just have some grocery varieties yeah. every day. Yeah, so you don't, and now, there's the white mushrooms and the brown mushrooms, which has more uh, nutrient value, does it matter? It really doesn't matter, and I would say that the more the better. So include more of these foods in the fall and winter will help hopefully boost the immune a little bit. And have some gum for the garlic. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we need that. <laughs> so they're top, top four immune boosting foods that you can take with you and have pre and post workout, like pre for the kiwi and post for the nuts, for example. Absolutely, so these are very good, even not as a snack, but perhaps maybe after meals, like after lunch and after dinner, have some of these will help uh, boost our immune in the fall and winter time. Wonderful, thank you so much for coming on the show, and when you come back, we'll talk about more nutrition information. I would love to, thanks Christine. And we'll be right back after this break. Thanks for watching. If you have a question or comment about today's episode, go to our website on the screen. For past episodes of the show, go to our YouTube channel. And until next time, run with it. Run With It is sponsored by Alkin Canada, Be Well TV, Hype Hair, Mallory's Fashion Network and In For Women Clothing, Secondhand Boutique, the Marriott Media Group, Skechers Performance Canada, and Powered by Chocolate Milk. Thanks to our partners at Powered by Chocolate Milk are helping athletes improve their sports recovery.